Hi, I'm Colin Clark, editor of Breaking Defense, and we're here in a strange little cocoon that Raytheon has put up at the Farnborough Air Show. And I'm here with Todd Probert, uh, VP of Many Things Cyber at the company. Um, we're in this room, and we've got a plane behind us. What are we looking at and why? So, Colin, we're here at the air show, and the conversation very much for Raytheon is one about air dominance. And in recent years, cyber has become a very large part of that equation. And uh, I think most people look at an airplane and go, what the hell has cyber got to do with an airplane? Right. How's that work? Right. No, so, so the concern today is that uh, a bad actor could land a cyber effect on, a, on an airframe or any other platform in a number of different ways. And Raytheon's working with our customers to do detailed vulnerability assessments to make sure we understand the vulnerabilities of that platform and then to provide solutions, remediations to, to those things that we find. So without providing the Chinese with any hints, um, my understanding is that aircraft radar can, and other gear can be used to uh, infect an aircraft with various cyber tools and that's one of the reasons that this work's going on. Well, you know, it's interesting. Air-to-air um, -air engagements are probably the least of the immediate concerns. There's very few nation-state actors that can affect an air-to-air -air, uh, type of EW attack. But if you think about an airframe or any platform, think about all the touch points. Uh, uh, the, the plane in a maintenance mode comes on the ground, and uh, much like when you take your, your car into a dealership, the first thing they do is plug a diagnostic system in. That's a cyber vector. Think about all the things that hang off of that airplane, right? The smart weapons that, uh, that we're building today each have uh, pretty comprehensive uh, computers on them, and again, uh, the, the pedigree and heritage of where they may be and, and something could have gotten on them and then getting into the aircraft. Uh, the pilots themselves uh, get into the airplane uh, with helmet-mounted displays and electronic flight bags, tablets basically, uh, that they plug into the system. Uh, any airplane has probably hey, a, a dozen computer systems on it versus throughout the avionics. Uh, the, the, the software baseline um, has varying pedigrees uh, and then the supply chain in and of itself. So literally tens of different ways that somebody could drop a cyber effect on that airplane. So we're looking comprehensively across all of those. So you're talking also about, uh, obviously, insider threats as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in balance from uh, what you've learned from your customers, is the insider threat a greater issue? Is active attack a greater issue? Uh, or can you make that judgment? I think the concerns are across the continuum. Certainly we're spending a lot of effort on the air-to-air -air engagement, and we can talk in depth on that. Uh, but we're also spending equal amount of time on what's going on uh, on the platform itself. And if you think about it, that makes sense. A lot of these platforms were designed 10, 20, in some cases 40 years ago, before cyber was a word, before we were concerned about that. So looking at the computer systems, the software code, the baseline, um, is something that we need to go back and take stock of, uh, because something could happen through any one of those vectors that could affect mission. Can you give it, tick off a couple of the major systems Raytheon's working on? to combat that sort of activity. So, so we can't speak specifically to the platforms we're working to remediate. Um, uh, in, in a general sense, we're working across the Air Force and the Navy in their uh, uh, their, their aviation spaces. We've talked openly about some of the stuff we're doing with B-22. Um, we're doing some stuff with Global Hawk on the ground systems. Those are the ones we publicly talked about. Um, but, but broadly, uh, we're working across all of the platforms, so think uh, um, fixed wing and rotor wing, and we're working with our customers holistically to make sure they understand their, their threat environment, and then we go, uh, we go to the mission with uh, appropriate uh, risk level. Broadly speaking, how rapidly and how, to what extent is this market sector growing? Yeah, that's been the challenge. So um, I point you to the 2016 NDA language, and that, that language said all weapon systems will have a vulnerability assessment in place by 2019. And um, we're seeing uh, that came sort of as a slow ramp up, but uh, the program manager is taking it seriously, and we're working uh, across those programs to do those vulnerability assessments. Of course, uh, funding, as always, is, uh, has been a little bit slow to catch up, uh, but uh, thankfully we're starting to see programming catch up with the mandates as well. Now, maybe the last one, I think, is Congress over the past, I think it's fair to say, five to seven years, 
has demonstrated repeatedly that it, it has difficulty dealing with some of these issues because they're so complex and so many members just aren't that familiar with the sorts of vulnerabilities we're talking about. What are you doing to educate the Hill so that they can catch up? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And um, the conversation is not just cyber, but it's software in general. And, and we're at inflection point, I think, because of what's happened in the commercial industry uh, to where DOD is taking note and, and changing um, how we build software. And, and part of that is uh, the processes we use. At Raytheon, we've spent a lot of time and effort making sure that our software coding processes are cyber safe, or at least keep cyber front of mind as we uh, as we build stuff. And then uh, the, the sustainment tail on, on any of these platforms, it's not something that you fix it once. There's no such thing as cyber hardened. Um, it's, it's more of something that has to be built into our DNA, and I think we're seeing that uh, certainly within the services, um, and we've been working with Congress to make sure that they appreciate what's going on in the market space, and I think the education's coming. Okay. Uh, Todd, thank you very much. I'm Colin Clark, editor of Breaking Defense.